2024 is hands down the best time to be a Godzilla fan. We just got two fantastic movies last year with one of them winning an Academy Award. Apple just renewed a second season of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. DC just published a crossover event with Godzilla where he battles the Justice League. And Gigabash recently put out even more Godzilla DLC featuring King Ghidorah and the Smog Monster as playable fighters. So it's safe to say that we're eating good, but it wasn't always like this. Following the release of Godzilla Final Wars in 2004, it really seemed like there would never be another Godzilla movie. No new film projects were announced, and Toho even went as far as destroying their water tank set that had been used on countless Godzilla projects. It really did feel like the end of an era. Despite this, the fandom was as alive and vibrant as ever. YouTube would go live only one year after the release of Final Wars, so a lot of Godzilla fans got to work making tributes, AMVs, stop-motion short films, toy reviews, and retrospectives on the franchise. A lot of fans dubbed this period the Dark Age of Godzilla because the franchise was in limbo. Nobody knew if the King of the Monsters would ever make a return to the big screen. So the term Dark Age really shouldn't be taken as I'm going to spend the entire video just mocking all this stuff because no, absolutely not. I have a soft spot for a lot of this stuff. So let's go right back into the trenches. This is the dark age of Godzilla YouTube content. Godzilla and his amazing friends was a series by Goji73, which follows Godzilla and his amazing friends. Okay, look, this was like crack to me. A little kid me, I guess. A little kid me on crack, that sounds wrong. Anyways, it's not high cinema, but at the same time, it was extremely entertaining. I loved seeing both Gamera and Ultraman monsters cross over with Kaiju from the Godzilla franchise. When looking back at it now, it's still very much a series that I admire. You could tell a ton of love and effort went into making it. The fight scenes are also just so charming, especially in the earlier episodes where the camera is clearly going in and out of focus. It's so amateur, but it's also just so charming at the same time. Beyond the technical issues, I do have a problem with some of the episodes relying a bit too heavily on telling the audience what is happening via narration from the YouTube's closed captioning. It kind of breaks the whole show don't tell rule. Again, I understand that these aren't supposed to be high cinema, but it does get annoying having to turn on closed captions and then read what's happening. It feels like lazy storytelling, even if it is just a YouTube series, but at the end of the day, it's just such a minor critique. Godzilla and His Amazing Friends is a really fun series that I adored as a kid. Looking through Goji73's channel, it immediately becomes clear that this dude loves kaiju and tokusatsu media. <laughs> I have an insane amount of respect for him, and I feel like he should be celebrated more as an important figure in the fandom. Did you know that data brokers are out there selling your information to scammers, spammers, and basically anyone that wants to target you? Your full name, email, home address, health records, and even your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me exactly which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests on my behalf. Cleaning up my information online reduces spam and protects me from hackers who could access my YouTube channel, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T recently revealed that over 73 million customer records, both from existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. This is huge news, and it shows why using Aura is so important right now. Experts recommend using strong passwords, monitoring account activity, and considering credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Well, Aura does all of this for me. And best of all, I don't have to download several different apps just to keep my data secure. With Aura always on, I don't have to worry about data breaches. Aura is always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I value my privacy and I also value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Firewood down in the description to start your two week free trial. Thank you again to Aura for sponsoring the channel. It really means the most. 
Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla Gigan Tribute is a fan-animated project that was created all the way back in 2002, three years before YouTube was even a thing. The original upload was taken down for some reason, so only a re-upload from 2014 still exists on the platform. While it isn't 100% accurate to Godzilla and Mechagodzilla, as Mechagodzilla is more just like Gigan here, I think it works really well. The fact that this was made in 2002 is just crazy to me. It reminds me a lot of those early, early Pixar shorts where it's very archaic, but again, that's just because the technology was so new. I don't know, there's not much to really say about it, but what I will say is that it's very well made for the time, and I think it honestly still holds up today. It's got some great visual gags, it's cute, it's fun. I love that the music is the old Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla theme. Everything about it just works so well and honestly feels like lightning in a bottle. James Rolfe is most well known for his iconic web series, The Angry Video Game Nerd. He made an episode that was centered around all of the bad Godzilla video games that were released prior to the Pipeworks trilogy. I'm a big fan of this series, but I honestly can't say that it's the best thing he's ever made. My favorite thing he's ever made is Cinemassacre 2000, a documentary of sorts about his early years as a budding filmmaker. However, what I want to talk about here is Cinemassacre's Monster Madness, Godzilla Thon. Every October, James Rolfe would review 31 horror movies. Each video would be released daily throughout the month. The reputation of the series has unfortunately declined in recent years after a plagiarism scandal for the 2021 season. That being said though, the earlier episodes were very simple and only ran for a few minutes. This series was a massive inspiration for my series, Halloween Horror Picture Show, where I basically did the exact same thing, covering 31 horror movies in the month of October. For me, Godzilla-thon was my introduction to the Godzilla franchise. It served as a crash course into what Godzilla and his rogues gallery embodied. I can confidently say that Godzilla-thon and Godzilla Unleashed was a perfect combo that made me a big fan of the Big G. The first review, which covered Godzilla 1954, is very serious and hardly features any jokes. Instead, it treats the film with a great deal of sincerity. It's a very solid review that also goes over the historical significance of the film in both pop culture, but also the history of Japan as a nation. After this, though, the series gets more comical and crude. It's not a bad thing by any means. It actually works really well, especially given the fact that these are videos made by the same dude behind Angry Video Game Nerd. It's such a quotable series, too. My favorite part is when Kong takes a tree and shoves it down Godzilla's throat. That's hilarious. Should have shoved it up his ass. This is my favorite part right here. Watch, it's the dick drop. Oh! This movie is the wet core of the smelly dog turd, and we're gonna take a bite right in. Come on, Angerus, don't step in the saw, you dumb shit. <laughs> Every year I go back and marathon these videos. They're just so fun to watch and they still hold up for the most part. There are some segments where the editing is very 2008, but all things considered, it's really well put together. I remember for a while the reviews for Tokyo SOS and Final Wars were just straight up gone because of copyright claims from Toho. Thankfully, the fully intact Godzilla-thon is available on YouTube and the Cinemassacre website. One thing that always stands out to me in Godzilla-thon is the passion and knowledge that Rolf brings to each review. His enthusiasm is infectious, and even when he's poking fun at the more absurd aspects of the Godzilla franchise, it's clear it comes from a place of deep appreciation. This balance of critique and admiration is what makes his reviews just so memorable. For those who are new to Godzilla or even to monster movies in general, Godzilla-thon serves as a perfect gateway. It's comprehensive, covering the entire timeline of Godzilla films up to that point, and it manages to be educational while remaining highly entertaining. The humor, while crude, is very much James Rolfe, and it adds a unique flavor to the reviews, making them distinct from other movie critiques. This is Godzilla at Thailand. It's a YouTube video that was uploaded in 2006, and I always hated it as a kid. The suit design made five-year-old me just so upset. There's a horn. Godzilla does not have a horn! That is not Godzilla! Anyways, it turns out that this is more than just a YouTube video. It's a commercial for motor oil. The video itself is entertaining, but weird. I love the ending where this faux Godzilla gets thrown into space. It's all good fun, but little kid me just always hated the inaccuracies. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, what do I even need to say about this video? It's a certified classic. Six-year-old me was hooked on this video and I would watch it nonstop. Nothing beats that Windows Movie Maker aesthetic. I love the super edgy music in the background. It's the perfect embodiment of what this era was at the time. And I remember being terrified of the picture that they used for Hedora. I felt like I needed to include this video since it was one of my favorites as a kid. And honestly, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's that Windows Movie Maker thing. I love it. Hello everybody, this is Luke Godzilla fan. Today I'm going to review the Bandai Creation Destroyer. Way back in the day, I used to watch a ton of Godzilla toy reviews and unboxings. Clearly, this is something that kids love, and I have no idea why. Part of me thinks it's the viewer living vicariously through the reviewer. I don't know. Regardless, my favorite was Shardimus Prime, who started uploading in 2008 and is still frequently posting 16 years later. However, Shardimus wasn't exactly someone who did a ton of Godzilla reviews, as he was more Marvel, DC, and of course, Transformers. The main channel that I did go to for Godzilla toy reviews was Ultraman Kronos. Looking back, these videos aren't amazing, but you have to remember that they were posted during the Bush administration. But they did get better as time went on. Around 2013, 2014, they were at their peak. While most toy reviewers were just putting things up against a blank wall and reviewing them, Ultraman Kronos had this really nice city set that was made of paper, and these do hold up. Their focused toy reviews where the reviewer is well-spoken and clearly knowledgeable about Godzilla and kaiju-centric stuff in general. He doesn't really feel like a tourist. He feels like someone who legit knows what they're talking about. Now, Ultraman Kronos is a channel that hasn't uploaded in well over nine years. His last upload, which is a Street Fighter 3 Let's Play, features a comment section that is almost exclusively people asking for him to come back and upload again, but he never has, and is mostly gone from the internet. That was until I found his second channel. Yeah, it turns out he was still uploading on a channel called Halozilla EX. His most recent upload there was in 2022. When asked whether or not he'll upload again, he responded back by saying, I really don't make videos anymore, which is totally fine. He doesn't exactly owe his subscribers anything, and it's clear he's moved on with his life. He's still posting infrequently, and his videos aren't about Godzilla anymore, and are just gameplay of Yu-Gi-Oh!, Elden Ring, and Dark Souls. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you here, I never watched Monster Island Buddies as a kid. I only recently found out about his channel, and despite that, I know for a fact if I didn't include this channel, then 90% of the comments would be just ripping on me for not including them. So, just remember, I didn't grow up watching these videos, and I don't exactly have the same connection to it that a lot of you might have. Monster Island Buddies is a YouTube channel that was started all the way back in 2010, and the channel is still going strong 14 years later. Originally, these videos on the channel were this ongoing series featuring Godzilla characters being utilized in various skits. If you're like four years old, then you might notice how on the surface, this is basically just Super Mario Logan, but with Godzilla figures being used. It's gorgeous! Yeah, yeah it is! I found this meme that basically compares the two, and it's kind of unhinged, but I love it. The fact that someone spent so much time making something like this is just crazy to me, but I do think comparing the two is pretty dumb. These are just fun, lighthearted skit videos. It feels like a kid playing with his toys, which is part of the entire appeal of the series. I didn't exactly find them all funny, but again, it's because I'm watching them now and I'm in my 20s. But that being said, I do like what Monster Island Buddies has been putting out recently. Around 2017, the channel eventually shifted to reviews for various Godzilla and Kaiju related media, like video games, movies, comics, and of course, toys. Obviously, Monster Island Buddies episodes would still be produced here and there, but the toy reviews did incredibly well. In my opinion, the best videos were the ones covering weird and obscure toys from Godzilla's history, like the Micro Man figures and the Trendmasters Godzilla figure maker. I'm not exactly someone who watches toy reviews very often, it's just not something that interests me, but I still love the videos being made by Monster Island Buddies. These are really well-made videos made by someone who clearly has a lot of passion for Godzilla. On top of that, it's extremely impressive that a 14-year-old YouTube channel is not only alive and well, but still producing content content that is better than their old stuff. Getting right back to the cringe, Godzilla Will Rock You Like a Hurricane by Brian Camper was a video that I watched nonstop as a kid, and it does
does not hold up whatsoever. This dude's intro is like a minute long. It's actually nuts. Nowadays, this is something that content creators here on YouTube would avoid like the plague because of watch time and retention, but that really wasn't a factor back then. A full minute of buildup was just so epic, but nowadays it just drags down the pace. Beyond that, it's a fun fan-made music video for the Scorpion song, Rock You Like a Hurricane, that almost exclusively utilizes clips from Godzilla Final Wars for the first two minutes. After that point, it's just a camera being pointed at a TV showing Godzilla clips. Kind of like All Godzilla Monsters by Star Fox 582. I'm really only including this because I used to watch it nonstop as a kid, and it was partially my introduction to Scorpions, and looking back, it's... Fascinating how nostalgia can color our perception of media. In my head as a kid, this was the coolest thing ever, but nowadays, um, no, it sucks. While these videos might not stand the test of time in terms of quality, its impact on my childhood is undeniable. It represents a time when fan-made Godzilla videos were raw, unpolished, and filled with genuine enthusiasm. It was a time when Toho wasn't exactly putting anything out, so fans stepped in to make some great, good, okay, decent content. Revisiting some of these videos offers a glimpse into the past and a reminder of how far fan content has come. So even though these early fan projects might be cringe by today's standards, they hold a very special place in my heart. They were a part of my journey into the world of Godzilla and for that, I'll always be grateful for them. If you have similar nostalgic memories, I encourage you to revisit them or if you're younger than me, then well, go and check them out. Quick pro tip, by the way, if you want to find old videos on YouTube, just type in before, colon, and then the year. Go and explore some of these videos. You might find that they still bring a smile to your face, even if you will absolutely cringe along the way. And with that, I just want to say I'm Cole McCormick. You're watching Firewood Media. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.